Hey, hey, we're back again. Tuesday, the 5th of March, would you believe it? It's uh, <clears throat> similar times to yesterday in terms of uh, the day is gone, slash nearly gone. What is that? I don't know. The day is gone, slash nearly gone, and uh, another good one. I say it's gone, I'm actually talking rubbish. So we've got the, the discovery session tonight which is good getting ready for that why well, i'm ready for that it's just a case of now doing it and excited to get stuck in what i yeah what what are my thoughts about going into it so i i, I kind of aired these thoughts yesterday i think it will take me every one of these you do it's like anything else i guess any, any the more you do of it the better you get or the more you know or the more you learn been a short while since I've I've done one of these and I think what I would I almost did a practice this morning a practice in the sense of you know warming up myself writing down certain questions trying to bring myself around I actually watched a little bit of of one of the previous ones I've done these are just a conversation so like I think one thing I've maybe done in the last day or two for myself is probably over hype the importance of of what I'm talking about in these sessions I don't share too much like I don't really I suppose I don't talk through things in detail that much I do just ask a lot of questions now that in itself requires preparation of course <clears throat> but it's not the same as me doing like a session with a client where I'm doing say 50 60 percent of the talking I think the volume of which that I could probably look at some statistics from a a tool I've used in the past to record sessions and tell me how often I talk in the discovery compared to a client session but it'll be lower for sure off balance uh, it'll be it'll be lower for sure and with that in mind it's just about asking the right questions at the right time and trying to elicit or, or take information from that call and that conversation and then what I'll do next is analyze it and I thought to that point one thing that could be really good for me to do is actually just talk through what happens when I onboard a client or talk through this. So what I'm going to do today is literally just go through the process I follow or the steps I take with a client post discovery. And yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. I, I want to do this for a couple of reasons, but I just kind of want to vocalize it. So, you know, that's a good reason as any, um, so now, discovery, like tonight, I will spend three hours with a potential client. So at this stage, the client has spoken to me at least once. They've elected to do a discovery session with me. They know there's a cost involved to that. Uh, that's all good. There's no contracts at this stage really. It's, there's no like formal arrangement or anything. The, they know what the outcome of this is. So as I position it from my perspective, it's my opportunity or what's important for me is to understand if I think I can actually help them or not. From their perspective, it's giving themselves a chance to get out of the business, get out of the day to day, and probably think about the company with someone who doesn't know anything about it in a way that they don't normally get the opportunity to do so. So discovery happens. There are a lot of notes. <laughs> so there's a lot of notes, a lot of shared. I, if I can, if the client's open to it, I do record it. If they don't want to do it, that's fine. Generally speaking, regardless, I note down as much as I can anyhow. And the client will take their own notes sometimes as well. I encourage them to try and not do that. But anyhow, off the back of the session, what I do is I generally let things sit. And this might sound strange to some people. I think rather than going straight into like a follow-up <clears throat> or analysis, I let it sit for about 24 hours. I really don't tend to, unless there's something I feel like I'm going to forget, <clears throat> or unless there's something in particular that I maybe didn't take a very good note on that I want to go through, I'll have the session and I'll just park it. I'll come back to it about 24 hours later and scribble out my initial, basically my gut feeling thoughts. So I, I just want to get it 
anything that's top of mind for me, get it down. So clean, clean sheet of paper and literally just grab a A4 printer sheet of paper and write down my key thoughts from that session. So, I mean, I might even just say straight at the top, and I generally do, I say, I don't think I can help this person because X stood out to me. Or, this person needs support here and here. I can give them support here, and I have a question mark around this, so I need to ask them more questions. Generally, I just try and summarize the conversation around 24 hours later for myself in a way that it's just a bit of an unload, you know, just clear the air as far as I'm concerned about how I feel about it. And then at some point over the next 24 hours after that, I go into like just what I call analysis. So I literally analyze the conversation, I analyze their answers, I analyze, again, I've structured it in a certain way. So there'll be like five or six key components to this conversation, usually taking about 20 or 30 minutes each. Some might take longer than ours, depending on where the business is at, they might not even spend much time on, on one of those. <clears throat> but I look at each of those sections and components and I try and derive from that where what's going well, what isn't. Or, again, from just listening to the owner, what's coming up regularly for them, what they think are key opportunities, big opportunities, what they think are things that need to be addressed month one or month six, or what are things that are holding them back today, but aren't that, you know, aren't that important in terms of helping them get towards where they want to be. Is there anything that's like a massive red flag? Is there anything that's like a whoa moment, you know, like, wow, that's a tremendous opportunity. I need to share that immediately. So there's all sorts going on there. It is an unpacking, it's analysis. That usually takes quite a bit of time. It probably takes the same time, I think, time again, two or three hours to do that for me. Again, I let it sit. So, you know, we're 48 hours after the session at this point, usually. I haven't shared anything with the client, you know, they're not expecting anything. At this stage, I generally pull my thoughts together on a one pager and I start tidying things up. And you know, I don't know at this stage whether I'm gonna help them or not. So, but I, I don't really, I don't do any pitching or I don't think about the pitch, so to speak yet, or the proposal until the very end. So next, I spend about a bit of time doing my 30 to 90 day kind of timeline roadmap recommendations. So that is my way of saying, look, here's my analysis. It's a lot of information. If I were in your shoes, this is what I would do. Then when I've done that, that's kind of all the, that's everything the client's expected from the session packaged up now. So we've done the session. I've done my analysis. I've tidied it up. I've got it in a presentable fashion. It's all packaged up and ready to go. What I then do is say, okay, if I can't help you, explain why. Done, basically. I just generally give a, a, a timeline of when I might touch base. Won't be less than six months. You know, if I'm saying I can't help you, it's probably unlikely that I need to be speaking with you again in the next six months. If I can help you, from my perspective, I obviously have to put that together in a, a pitch and a compelling proposal. And that's what I do next. So I say, Look, person X, I think I can help you. Here's why. Here's what I found. Here's what we'd start with. Here's why. And I'm quite open about this. And, you know, have people taken that knowledge and, and said, look, we don't want your help, but thanks, we'll go with this for now. I'd imagine so, in a couple of cases. Is that a problem? No, I don't see it as a problem. I know the value, like anything, you can give someone the tools, but they don't know how to use them. Or you can give someone the tools and they kind of use them sometimes. There's, a, there's much more to my service or my offering than just handing someone a bit of paper and saying, off you go. In fact, if anything, I try and be very honest about this and that, that just, that works for some people. Some advisors, some consultants, that's how they operate. They don't get involved in implementation. I do. So, off the back of doing all that, I'll send over a proposal <clears throat> and really the client decides if they want to work with me or not. And, you know, what I'll do is, the clues in the name in a lot of ways, it's, it's flexible ops, flexible operations. 
depending on the clients, the size of their agency, the stuff that came up, the cadence of which we work together or the frequency or what I proposed will vary. And that's the beauty of it. I think that's really important. So it will be very much will be catered towards what I know about them at that point. And if they say yes, fantastic. <laughs> the, the interesting thing and quite deliberately, there's not a tremendous amount that then happens at that point. Really, the only thing that happens if they say yes, so someone says yes and they become a client, we go through the administrative stuff. <clears throat> but the very first thing I do is I book in the first session. I don't even I don't even hesitate with all that stuff because I think the most important thing is to keep the momentum you built through the discovery session. The clients just said they're ready to work with you. I don't want to start sending like kind of random logins to this and that and invites to join this and info on how to do this. I just want to get them booked in for their first session because the first session is very much part of the onboarding and it's just very much a continuation of the discovery session. So I usually look at it like, okay, next session is in two to three weeks from then. If it's sooner, mm, it's probably a bit soon. Keep in mind that there will be things that they can do from the discovery session before we next meet. And they'll generally be very high impact, low time tasks or exercises. I don't generally do anything for someone between the discovery and the first session. Like I, I don't really, it won't be any, it won't be a period of time where I'm really doing work for the client. <clears throat> That'll be a chance for them maybe to do one or two small things. But the first session is booked in and then we just go through that. My onboarding process is very streamlined. It's pretty simple. You know, contract, billing slash invoicing. I use Notion for clients, basically client facing work. So get them set up on Notion. Um, and that's that, it, those three things. And I send them, a, send them a video, send them a loom uh, about how to get set up on all those fronts and what they need to know, send them any details they need, and then I just give them a quick ring and basically say, look, does all that make sense? If the answer is yes, you're by all means onboarded, at least in terms of an administrative sense. So first session happens, first session is a continuation of the conversation around the discovery session, we'll pick, I mean, the way I like to look at this is, <clears throat> there's more digging. So months one to three is continuous digging into certain areas of their business. So again, there'll be four or five components that are really going on. But at the same time, what are the short term gains or short term wins that are really important for a client to see in any capacity? Doesn't matter what your business is, but also the stuff that we've discussed already that we know just needs to move fast, you know, so what's the stuff that has to has to happen that's blocking our things? Why is that not happening? Go get it done. So there's a mix of the longer term thinking, the longer term strategy, alongside the short term gains. And that, frankly, that was a rattle through, but I, you know, even hearing that myself, I'll listen back to this, but that is pretty, it's pretty good as far as I'm concerned. I mean, what are the key differences then between what I'm doing and what someone else might do? At least of what I'm aware of, the implementation piece in the early days for me is quite high. So I would generally find myself helping clients a lot in like month or one or two of small things. I know there are people that to get, as I alluded to just a couple of minutes ago, they just stray away from that and that's fair enough. I just think it's really helpful and it shows you're in a good place with a client. If you can get stuck in and roll up your sleeves and, and help them immediately in that sense. <clears throat> and two, I probably don't really hang around that much. I mean, Again, I don't like this idea of kind of stretching things out. Like I like to, if I'm genuinely helping someone and they need help now, let's get at it. I mean, let's just, let's go. I don't want to wait around for another couple of months before I see you again. So, um, and then what else? I mean, there's not really, I don't have, I keep things very simple for myself and my clients. I use Notion, it's a nice platform. Do I need to? No, probably could use G Suite just, just fine, but yeah, it's just, I don't want them to have to be logging into things and checking everything every day. And onboarding wise, probably something I left out there is that generally in the first three months are more or less every week. And in fairness, I should say the first three months, clients have been with me six months, I generally check in with them every week in some capacity. So, but yeah, that is onboarding slash what it looks like off the back of discovery. So, fingers crossed.
uh, I say fingers crossed. There's not much hoping being done here. It's you know, we'll do the discovery sessions this week. Some of them might become clients, some may not. It's just the way it goes. But the ones that do become clients will go through something quite similar to that. And yeah, I expect slash know that in the right places um, with the right people, it'll be really helpful. So that's all for today. Back tomorrow. Don't have a discovery on Wednesday. Uh, it's a bit of a break. So tomorrow I'll be doing a bit of the analysis I talked about for the session that I have today. And that'll probably be the main thing tomorrow. So anyway, check these in.